Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Wolf Electronic ISOs webinar. My name is Markus Eberle, and I will moderate this webinar today. We are very pleased that you took the time to participate in our webinar. The topic of today's webinar is RedCube High Power Terminals for Ampacity of 50 to 500 amps in SMT, THR, Pressfit, and Plug technology. Our speaker today is Gert Schattmann, who is working as technical sales at Wolf Electronic ISOs. He will hold today's webinar and also answer your questions. Before we start the webinar, I would like to point out one thing. You will be muted during the webinar today. This means that you cannot ask us questions via microphone during the webinar. Nevertheless, you have the opportunity to ask us questions during the webinar at any time via the chat function. You will find the chat function in the webinar control panel. Today's webinar will be about 30 minutes long. The chat questions will then be answered in a question answer session following the webinar. There are 10 to 15 minutes in addition scheduled for this. If we are unable to answer all your questions within this time, we will answer them via email after the webinar. If you still have any other questions left after the webinar, just email us at isis-webinar at we-online.com. We will try to answer all questions promptly. At the end of the webinar, you will be asked to participate in a, uh, in a feedback survey. We would be pleased if you take the time to fill out the survey and help us to improve our webinars. You will also receive the link to the presentation as well as to the recording of today's webinar only in the next few weeks. And now we would like to start with a little video and then I will hand over to our speaker Götz. And now I wish you an exciting webinar. RedCube terminals are the best solutions for high current applications. Four different designs cover all leading processing technologies. With the lowest failure in time value, RedCube PressFit is the most reliable technology on PCB. Pressing the pins into the PCB, the high friction between pin and plated through hole generates a homogeneous cold welding of both materials. This results in a gas-tight, strong mechanical connection with contact resistance less than 200 micro-ohms. No other connection technology transfers currents up to 500 ampere with almost no heat development. The new quick and easy pluggable solution, Red Q Plug, provides power up to 120 ampere and offers all press fit advantages. A spring force locks the plug automatically and fully reliable. A hexagonal crimping connects the plug with the cable. Red Cube SMD and THR combine fully automatically. Pick and place with the efficient and time saving. Reflow soldering process. The small size of Red Cube SMD guarantees a high packing density without critical heat development on the PCB. Red Cube SMD provides current up to 70 ampere. The brilliant idea of the new angled Red Cube SMD version allows a direct 90 degree board to board connection as well as wire to board connection. Red Cube THR has a special pin design for best solderability and currents up to 85 ampere. Milling from solid materials, Red Cube THR guarantees high ampacity with greater torque compared to stamped contacts. So, hello everyone and uh, Marcus, uh, thanks for your introduction. My name is uh, Gert Schattmann and I work as an FAE at Word Electronics here in Germany in the field of um, ICANN, that's uh, for electromechanical systems. Today I will tell you something about our red cube terminals um, for their high power applications. Um, just a small remark, 
This uh, is a basic presentation, a very condensed presentation only due to the limited time frame that we have today. The full presentation lasts about two hours normally. So anyway, this will give you a good insight uh, of what is possible and what is, uh, and I will tell you what is most important and you have to take care about. So let's jump to the, today's agenda. So I will give you a brief overlook of the terminals uh, that we provide. Um, we, let's, uh, we are going to speak about the PressFit technology and how does it work, since it's the most beneficial technology to manage these high currents. We take a close look at the electrical properties as well as the mechanical properties. And then we have an example of uh, the PressFit process itself, how it works, and uh, we will give you some application examples. Afterwards, uh, I will also introduce the RedCube uh, solderable um, terminals in SMD and THR technology. Also, I don't want to miss uh, to tell you a little bit about uh, derating and cable dimension, how to choose the right components. So let's jump in. Full power, you guess why uh, we call it that way. It's the press fit terminals. We have the red cube plug terminals. I hope the video was working well for you in the beginning. Uh, we have the red cube SMD and we also have the THR versions. So um, if we look to the press fit technology, um, this can um, tell us something more. Uh, so just an idea, how does the press fit technology work? Um, it's uh, just by pressing the solid pins into the via of the PCB, uh, you achieve a cold welding connection. That's what you saw in the video. And this works without soldering. Uh, this is a gas tight connection. And uh, of course it has a very good electrical properties as well as high mechanical strength. Uh, we achieve a low resistance connection of uh, 100 up to maximum 200 micro ohms. Uh, and in the end, that means of course that you have a, um, a very low self heating when it comes to high currents. Um, you won't see any problems uh, with cold solder joints also. In the market, uh, soldering is not accepted as a fixed connection uh, anyway in some branches, like for example, um, avionic. So you won't see any of those problems since it's not soldered. Yeah? We achieve a very high opacity, so you can transfer about um, 300 amps into a PCB or even more if you uh, use additional solid copper bars. Uh, you can also, the press fit uh, terminals can also be mounted uh, on a double side. This is what you see in the uh, bottom right hand corner here. Uh, we see the, the upper, uh, on the upper level, uh, those, uh, there's this row of terminals. And as you can imagine, uh, those are the ones that were um, assembled from the bottom side. So. Um, solder free, gas tight, powerful electrical and mechanical connections. This is the main uh, things. And uh, when we talk about mechanical uh, connection, this also means that the failure in time is up to 30 times better than a soldered version. Mm -hmm. If we talk about gas tight connection, what does it mean? Well, I explained uh, the cold welding and here you see uh, this side, if you see the FR4 material, then you have here, um, this is the copper uh, from the via. Then you have a small uh, surface, which is the tin uh, plating. And this is just a corner of, uh, just one corner of, uh, of a press fit pin. Uh, all this is made of uh, messing uh, or brass <laughs> in English. And uh, well, brass uh, is mainly uh, uh, consisting of uh, copper, as you know. 
And also, of course, here we have the final plating, like the tin that we see. So what happens uh, during the press fit process? Um, the molecular structure of the surface is stressed by the forces need to press in the pins into the via. And um, within about 48 hours, uh, you will gain the maximum stability and strength as the molecules inside here, they restructure um, their, their pattern and uh, then they like growing together. Um, it is called welding process, the conjunction between the brass of the red cube terminal and the copper of the VI is becoming a very homogeneous zone. Uh, this causes the high mechanical retention force and of course the um, very low contact resistance. The tin itself uh, provides uh, a smooth sliding into the via and uh, during the process it's pressed uh, to the sides of the connection area uh, where, it, where it works like an additional ceiling like here and here so nothing else can uh, get in between those two parts. So this is the result. So um, where's the press fit technology used? Of course, mainly in the high current applications uh, where it comes to um, high currents need to be transferred from or to a PCB, like permanent load or uh, in peaks, of course. Then the mechanical strength is really important. Like you can see here, uh, for this one, there's a big cable connected here. You see the, the massive bolt and, and screws. And uh, we call that big hardware. So it can uh, really hold, has really ho um, strong holding forces. The high environmental stability is also really important, whether if it comes to temperature, rise and fall, and even the vibration cannot harm it or harmful gases. Um, since we have a gas tight connection, um, they cannot harm the connection anyway. And here you see a uh, brief um, comparison between a standard terminal block, um, which is in, indeed, uh, or in natural, is even bigger than uh, this type of connection. I can only carry up to 75 amps in this case, where we can here go really, uh, much faster, uh, much higher. So just a short comparison, <clears throat> even if you don't have uh, terminals with uh, flexible pins anymore in our portfolio, this is what you see in the right hand side here. Um, well, it's still on the market and so it's important to understand uh, the difference. On the left hand side, you can see one of our press fit uh, terminals with the massive uh, pins here. Uh, on the right hand side, this is a, a stamped product uh, consisting of two parts. Yeah? And what you see here is uh, this uh, range of curve, um, which is the flexible pin. So if you look uh, something closer, of course, this is the pin, which is pressed into a via and connected on four corners. Uh, we already saw that picture. If you compare this now to a flexible pin, this is what a flexible pin can look like. It's a bit narrowed and uh, it's more like oval, but it's not a straight massive pin. So during um, press in, the pin is being deformed and uh, due to this um, deformation, it holds in the PCB. So the via itself is not going to be um, changed or deformed in any way. So what is uh, important to understand if we compare this, so this should be a PCB like the FR4 material, then we have a copper layer on the top and on the bottom. And here we have the via, of course this should be orange as well. And uh, the blue area is, or the gray zone, uh, would be the connecting area of a massive press fit pin. Um, compared to, uh, here's the connection uh, area of a flex pin. Um, and you can see, of course, that it's uh, much smaller and it connects only to the via. 
uh, right in the, in the center area. Um, but the layers are not connected directly since they are up here. So what we show here in this graph is um, a view onto a via and if the pin goes in. So this is the contact area and um, the current has cl to climb uh, all the way through the via up to the top or even to the bottom. Um, so under uh, really high currents, it may happen that this is the point where, it, where it's heating up really uh, very much. And this is what's not gonna happen with the massive pin because it's connected directly here to, the, uh, to all of the layers. So for press fit pins, therefore it's important to press them all through the whole PCB. So they should come out as well on the, on the bottom side here. Um, this also makes inspection pretty easy as well. There's one more image uh, that you can see. Here's the connecting area of the flex pin. And this is the way it has to go. So if we look to the electrical properties, um, this is a pin, of course, again, in the via, it's pressed in already. So we have a 360 degree here and it's connected on four corners because it's, the pin is square. You see the, the massive, um, the massive area um, where the, current can flow through and we have a, a angle that's connected on four corners, which is uh, normally about 10 to 15 degrees. So now the question that came up um, to many people is that those four corners, is this uh, enough to transport all the, the current uh, going through the whole surface here? So, now, what we're going to explain is here, um, just in simple words, um, like this is the pin here that we saw, and this has an, um, a cross section of 1.28 millimeters. And uh, what we see here is uh, some layers, and of course, this is the whole via, and the yellow line, uh, vertical line shows the area where the pin connects to the via. And of course we have four of them. For a PCB with about two millimeter uh, thickness and those uh, 13 degree of angle connected, uh, we receive this kind of cross section and this um, multiplied by four because we have four corners that will lead us to this uh, cross section. So it's obvious that the cross section um, of the connecting to the via is bigger than the square of the pin. So there is no bottleneck in this case. Uh, PCBs can you be used from a 1.6 up to a maximum of 3.2 millimeters in thickness. So here's another question. So um, it's uh, about which pinning is uh, to choose, yeah? So, or in other words, does the full pinning offer higher current carrying capabilities like this one, that's a full pinning. And uh, here compared to our circumference uh, pinning as we call this. So you see there is no pins in the, in the center. Well, the answer is no. <clears throat> um, when it comes to the um, current carrying capabilities because um, both of them have 16 pins. That's a four by four and that's a five by five, but no inner pins. Therefore, um, the explanation is pretty easy because uh, the current always takes the short path. And here you have a wider area that you can connect to your, um, to your PCB layer. And uh, therefore it's easier for the, uh, current to, to uh, flow into the PCB. So what's always clear uh, is that the density, the power current density will be much lower for these inner pins um, because of the longer way. So the 
current will flow from the outer pins. Um, but why do we offer also the, the full pinning then? Well, in terms of mechanical holding forces, the full pinning uh, is better than the circumference design. Now there's a, another um, description of the current density, like the pin is here now in uh, um, horizontal, and uh, the current is going coming here from the right hand side. Then you have the weir, and we have those four layers again. So this should be turned around in about 90 degrees angle. Um, so the current comes here and is distributed uh, through the pin into the different vias. So what's going to happen here? And let me just turn this a bit for you. So like this, uh, now you have the PCB um, in the horizontal and uh, pin in vertical again. So this is the top layer. And you have this, uh, the first inner layer, second inner layer, and the bottom layer. And what this graph shows is that the heat, of course, is going up. And therefore, the heat dissipation is best on the top surface. And therefore, the current density is best on the top surface. Uh, on the inner side, it's going, uh, getting bad. Uh, it's getting worse. And on the bottom side, well, there is some heat dissipation going outside. But generally, the heat is going direction upwards. So uh, if you choose a PCB with two or four layers or how many ever, uh, with the same thickness, um, most of the current will run over the top layer, like here. And um, the, the load is definitely not uh, symmetric. That's the information here. So the next question is, must press determinants be soldered? And as you have listened, no, they must not. The Prestit technology is absolutely solderless because we have the cold welding. By soldering a Prestit connection, most of the benefits of the Prestit technology will get lost. So when soldering after pressing, you break up the gas side connection and you fill it with another material like the tin here and uh, therefore increase the resistance. And over time, uh, the connection will lose its, its stability. So the press fit uh, process itself is always the last process in the, in the whole assembly uh, line. Um, also due to the massive volume of the red cubes, like they are really massive compared to other components, um, it's really hard to bring it uh, to an overall temperature to realize a good solar joint here. Uh, it takes away just uh, all, all the heat from the process. And it's also accumulated uh, in these parts and uh, they will dissipate uh, afterwards the, the heat very slowly. And maybe that can also harm um, smaller components that are located uh, close around of the, of the red cubes. like. See here some smaller components. Maybe it, it can harm those components. Um, it can also it can also lead to, to a melting of the tin surface, like you see here, marked with the arrows. This looks a bit um, not nice, but uh, it's more cosmetics. But this can also happen on the inner side that the tin is melting up, and uh, if there are remaining some some tin bulbs inside guess how it works if you want to screw something in here. This maybe is not working anymore. Also, um, heating the red cube uh, pressed elements uh, can lead to a thermal expansion of the PCB because, let me show you this. This is the pin again, you know this picture already. Now, if you fill all those gaps here uh, with uh, tin, um, then you can imagine that tin has a different um, expansion factor than uh, the copper has. So over time, this is a working area here and uh, this will lose its strength over the time. Yeah? And what you also see is that uh, here, these white uh, points, uh, white patterns, this is a, a type of delamination. So the, um, FR4 material is uh, already harmed by the by the pressure um, that appears here, 
and um, so this is a perfect way to get moisture in and uh, to uh, speed up your corrosion. Further, um, if you look to this picture, this is the red cube as well. Uh, here are the pins. And um, if you look inside, you see the PCB with the layers. And um, here it's not given that the tin can go all through, to, through the via. What happens is that you create uh, these kind of hidden voids. And uh, of course, here is no electrical connection. So um, such a soldering result is not compliant to any standards, standards like, for example, the IPC 610, which is used widely in the industrial market. So it is a very close link to the mechanical properties, of course. And uh, this is also very important to um, have your PCB specifications in mind when you design the PCB. So uh, upfront, you should uh, be clear about what kind of um, surface uh, for the uh, PCB you want to choose. Uh, we suggest to use uh, chemical surfaces like uh, tin, or you can also use uh, nickel gold, um, but also on the market is uh, HAL, which is hot air leveling. And what is most important is to look on this measure. This is the open diameter of this, uh, of this hole where the pin uh, has to go in. And uh, you also have to um, bear in mind that the, the copper has to be minimum thickness uh, of 25 square, uh, uh, 25 micrometers and uh, up to 60 micrometers. Yeah. Depending on this thickness, of course, this diameter will change. So the most important is this one and you really have to uh, be careful about this. Um, so if the, the difference it seems to be pretty small here from 175 to 1.45. Um, this is uh, anyway really important to achieve a very good um, connection of the pin. And this is what you can tell your PCB manufacturer. Uh, we also have the uh, libraries available for both measures. So upfront you really need to know what kind of plating you're going to use. So the tin plating here again uh, is very, very clear and uh, very even and homogeneous uh, surface. While um, with the hot air leveling and is blowing away the, the liquid tin and therefore this is a bit uneven. And what happens is here that you are like a bit bulby. Um, this uh, leads to a higher tolerance at all. Yeah? So uh, if you use the same parameters like uh, for the chemical tin, it might be the case that um, the diameter is too, um, too less and uh, you need extremely uh, forces to press in your pin. Normal press force is about 40 to 100 uh, Newton per pin. So <clears throat> we suggest to use a chemical tin surface. Um, I also said that uh, nickel gold plating is also possible to use, um, but you need to know that the pressing force is higher due to the fact that uh, nickel underlay is really hard and also the holding forces once it's pressed in might be a bit lower compared to a tin surface. So how does the press fit process look like? I hope this video runs uh, good and uh, you will see how it works. By the way, this is a copper bar he has inserted here. And this is a ground plate to support what he is doing here. And that's it. Just place the component on its position to make sure you don't press on the on the thread not to harm this. So the, the process itself it should be 
uh, constant with constant uh, speed, uh, not like hammering it in, you know, but it goes really quickly. And that's it. So you can see the copper here in this area. So I will come to this in a minute. Um, this is another kind of press, so any type of knuckle or joint presses or uh, can be used uh, for this press fit process as long as it can uh, bring up uh, as much force uh, or pressure that you need. Um, presses uh, with a force sensor like we see here, there's a little cable and there's a sensor here and there's a PC attached. Yeah, so. Uh, with a software that shows the uh, a force displacement diagram, uh, this is the optimum. So they offer the possibility to immediately evaluate uh, the quality of the process, uh, press fit process. And this is uh, in uh, some branches, like in automotive, this is mandatory. So as promised, here are some um, application examples. This is just uh, two pins. Uh, here bringing maybe the, the um, power to the board. Um, now you know, remember this picture or image as well. Here is a double connection to a, a longer lock. So this uh, can increase also the, the um, total current. Then what you can also use uh, the, it for is um, to um, install fuses like this one. And um, this is the copper bar I just mentioned. Yeah. So this is uh, of course upside down and you see the PCB and through the PCB, um, this uh, pressed fit element is also um, pressed into the copper bar. So you can support um, to your your current, uh, your higher currents, um, and you no need to bring directly into the PCB because there is a limitation. Of course, you can't uh, uh, do the layers uh, as thick as you want. Um, I think uh, the maximum is about 105 micro um, micrometers. Yeah, so that will be expensive anyway. So you can also install that on the outside. As long as you don't exceed the total measure of 3.2 millimeter, you can do it like this. Uh, oops, just want to click too fast. So this connection is a board to board connection, bringing the, the high um, ampacity to another level here, physical level. Uh, this is a two part uh, press fit uh, uh, terminal. So you can also go through a complete PCB. So now we see the plug, as you saw before, uh, how it is being used uh, in for high current applications up to 120 amps. If you want to quickly change um, your cables, this is very convenient. Um, so for electronic loads and measurement or lab laboratories, this can be really, really helpful. Yeah. So we have an automatic locking um, function by a spring uh, that is installed here. It's, uh, so to say it's a ZIF connector because if you press it and you can put in the uh, connector with a, a zero insertion force and uh, then you release uh, the cap and it locks uh, the, um, the contact here in the in the hole. So what we offer is a different cross section from four to sixteen square millimeters um, to support your your um, demand for the current. And this is how it works internally. You see the spring force, and this is a, a plastic housing here. And um, this also uh, has a heat resistance up to one hundred twenty five degrees. So I hope this is uh, good for now. Now we would like to give you an information about the solderable um, SMD and THR types. So uh, for applications with currents up to 85 amperes, um, our SMD and THR types uh, may be the right choice. 
must must all be, always be in in three uh, digits, um, but also uh, like uh, below 100 amps uh, is also a big range in the market, like in uh, for example, e-mobility and like uh, e-bikes or whatever. Yeah. Um, the big advantage um, that all the types that can be sold uh, bring with it is that you can assemble them um, by machinery, by picking pick and place machines. So uh, it's delivered in, on tape and reel, so for automated um, production. And um, while well, the machine doesn't care if you have a capacitor or whatever, or in this case, like the red tube terminals. Yeah. So it's efficient, time saving, um, not uh, as big as the press fit uh, types, yeah, and still offers mechanical uh, good uh, forces, holding forces, and you know, also high torques. Yeah. Uh, it's limited to, to the, uh, the screw size of M3. Um, up to M5. Now here in detail, you see a standard uh, SMD type. Uh, this one is going limited to 70 amps. Uh, it's an example for the 90 degree um, solution. Um, simple, fast, automated, I just mentioned. And the THR type, uh, that's very special because, you know, THT, like through whole technology, but THR means it's also through hole, but of course uh, R stands for reflow. That means you can solder this together with any other uh, SMD components in a reflow process. You don't have to run it over the wave, and that's an, uh, a very good um, argument for this uh, kind of components. And of course, uh, if you're using then the vias. Uh, you already have the pins, so you can distribute um, the current into different layers of your PCB. That's another example here for the uh, right angle version. And now you see also the standard uh, SMD type here installed on uh, SMD um, PCB. Um, another example I know from, from the field, from my customers, uh, they're using um, you know, metal substrate uh, PCBs, so they, uh, that's for LED applications and they need to um, have a good uh, heat dissipation, therefore it's a metal, metal substrate. Of course, they cannot use through hole technology there. Um, and uh, that's why they uh, rely on these SMD connectors here. Yeah. So I don't want to miss uh, to talk something or tell you something about uh, cable dimension and derating as well, because uh, just in this uh, term, it's really important and it's how to select the right red cube terminal because that's one of the major questions here. Of course, um, how many amperes uh, you have in your application, that's the main question, of course. And um, don't miss uh, to think about the temperature range your application will show. Um, from the ampere side, you come to the cable cross-section that is required. And by the cross-section, you can find out what kind of cable lock you can use. And by the cable lock, this shows you, um, gives you a several um, possibilities to choose of what kind of thread is used. So the MX like M4 up to M12 or 16, whatever. And this leads you to the right uh, red cube terminal down, now then. Of course, you have to take care about other attributes like mounting orientation, whatever. So um, <clears throat> to choose the right cable look, like here in uh, the European Union, or especially in Germany, we have the VDE 0100, but you can also have that from UL or um, other uh, reg uh, regulations and uh, standards that means, like here, if you, for example, look for uh, application has up to 200 amps that you require. So this is maybe a bit too weak, so let's go to the next step here. 245 sounds good. So we, you select a seven square, uh, 70 square millimeter cable. Now, when it comes to um, 
the ambient temperature. You see that this value is valid for 20 degrees. So it's like uh, we have it in a lab or in a normal room, but not in summer. And uh, as you can imagine, uh, appliance or uh, application can easily heat up like in the term of uh, 50 degrees or even higher. And uh, like here by VD0100 um, with uh, 50 degrees, um, your current um, in the cable has to be decreased down to 174 amps. So this does not manage to transport you 200 amps anymore. So again, you have to go one step further like this one. So you find the 95 uh, square uh, millimeter type. And uh, yeah, that's uh, the point of derating that you should uh, consider um, when you think about your application. So now you see that you can use, you can use uh, screws from M8 up to M16. Uh, this is what is available for the cable lux. And then you have to find out which is the right um, press fit component that works here because you can't do this with the solder types, S and D types anymore. So therefore we also provide uh, the D rating curves for all of our press fit terminals. And here you see the different uh, types that we have. Um, they are by uh, build form like the seven, to seven by seven millimeters up to 16 by 16. So you can imagine that this one of course is uh, offers the highest opacity. And here you also see the 95 square millimeter cable um, here starting at 20 degrees. And from this point, you have to uh, decrease your current rate. So the point is um, to, to explain a little bit in the point of uh, derating, like if a connector a data sheet tells you uh, your connector offers 50 amps and uh, it can hold up to maximum of 105 degrees. Does this mean that you can run 50 amps at this high temperature over your connector? Well, that's often common thought, but it's not true. Um, at maximum temperature for your component, your current is limited to zero. Like if a press fit component is getting 150 degrees hot, if you still continue to put in current here, it will still heat up and that's not allowed. So therefore the current here has to be cut down to zero. And this is how you read uh, this curve. And this is what you need into consideration for your application. Of course, we have the same thing here for the S and D and THR types. So whatever you need, we can provide it to you. So just a quick summary, I told you about the um, high currents that you, and the, the long reliability, uh, three times FIT, failure in time, uh, means three times better than a soldered connection. Um, extremely low contact resistance, resistance therefore it keeps cool. Um, high holding forces as well. Um, and uh, we heard in a, in a uh, prior uh, uh, webinar that the customers are using it. Uh, just a, a right angled uh, press fit um, a terminal just to hold a fan. <laughs> yeah, that's a mechanical solution in that case, but it also works and it's uh, very cost effective. Yeah. So then we have the red tube SMD and THR types um, for the, if you have a little lower demand on, uh, on currents. Yeah. Okay, so um, yeah, that was really, really very compressed and I'm sorry for that. Uh, but however, I wish you have a better understanding of the RACUB uh, family as before. Um, however, um, you can um, always uh, receive the full presentation, just uh, ask your local um, representative and uh, they will tell you all the details. You can also, um, easily refer to the RedCube design guides that we provide on our website. And we have two of them, one for the press fit and one for the SMT types. So all the details are also in here, as well as this nice video that you had in the beginning. 
So if you have uh, any question or wish uh, to contact us for further details, please do not hesitate, we are here. Um, lastly, please take care of yourself and stay healthy. And I say thanks for your attention. So thank you guys for your presentation and your interesting informations. As you have mentioned, now we would like to turn our attention to your questions. And we wait a little until some questions come in. Um, you can mm -hmm. ask us the questions with the uh, webinar control panel with the chat function. Okay. So then, Götz, I see the first question. Um, why is it not recommended to solder after a component is pressed in? Because I need to assemble my THT components to the PCB as well. Oh yeah, good question. Um, I hear this question very often. Uh, of course, I understand um, that you want to assemble your uh, THT components and run it over the solder uh, wave soldering, um, but the press it. Uh, it's always the last process in your assembly process chain. And as mentioned, you will lose the benefit of press-fit connection, like the mechanical strength will be weakened and uh, the, the low contact resistance uh, will uh, go away. So uh, the specs in the data sheet refer to a proper installation. And if you don't follow the guidelines, then you are in an unspecified field. Um, you have to prove all the values then by yourself. And the durability of the connection uh, will not be given um, in this case. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Götz, mm -hmm. for your explanation. Then the next question I can see also here. Okay. Um, I've been looking into the data sheets already before. The given torques to screw the cables seem to be pretty low. Is this correct? Mm. Uh, yeah, good question. Yeah, of course, this is uh, correct indeed. And it's proven. And um, yeah, if you talk about higher torques, you may know uh, them about uh, from, from steel or stainless uh, steel fixings. Yeah. Um, but you need to, to consider uh, that uh, red cubes uh, consist of brass, which is uh, way uh, uh, way weaker than steel. Yeah? And um, the risk is if you over torque, then uh, there's the risk of, of damage or deformation in the thread of the red cube, and uh, then you can use it, can't use it anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's also not uh, possible to change a uh, red cube once it's pressed in. You can, of course, you can press it out, but uh, you, the, the PCB will be dead and no longer usable. Okay, thank you, Götz. So for now, I see the last question also. Um, if there are any uh, are other questions coming, you can also ask us your questions um, at our email address. Ask us just at isis-webinar at we-online.com. So gets then now the last question. Are the Red Cube components um, for UL94? Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, you talk about the flammability class, of course, yeah. Well, the red cubes uh, are rust and reach compliant, um, but since red cubes consist of full metal, UL94 does not apply. It's not relevant for here because uh, UL49 um, um, is relevant mainly for the, the flammable materials like insulations and, and plastics. Yeah? So that's not the case uh, for, for the red cube. If red cube uh, is burning or melting, it's uh, too late anyway, I would suggest. <laughs> so, um, uh, well, we have uh, one exception and that's the red, the red cube pluggable. As you saw, this has this red housing um, and they have an isolation made by LCP plastics. Yeah. 
Um, therefore, LCP is uh, UL94V0 uh, compliant, which is the best uh, flammability class in the field, and it's specified up to um, 125 degrees for it to use. Yeah. And um, yeah, by the way, LCP plastic is also naturally glow wire comp compliant if this is demanded as well. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. You should bear in mind that uh, designing engineers are responsible to comply with all the standards uh, in terms of creep, pitch, and clearance, and distances, and so. On. So, <laughs> by the way, we also offer a separate webinar on that topics as well. Okay, so thank you for your explanation, Götz. And now we are finished with our webinar. Thank you very much for your attention and I hope you enjoyed our webinar. Also, many thanks to you again, Götz, for this great webinar. Thank you for your guidance and uh, all of you um, for your uh, participation here. I hope you will hear us at our next webinar and I wish you a good day. Goodbye. Bye-bye.